San Antonio starts right now. Making news at this hour. Now that cold weather has moved into our area, we'll tell you about some local organizations preparing to help those who need it most. Plus, as new details emerge about the origins of the coronavirus, the Biden administration is promising a boost in COVID-19 vaccine shipments in the days ahead. Outside with live cam, we have some clouds around and some moisture as well. Radar very interesting this morning. We'll leave the details to Mike Osterhage, especially what's happening in the Hill Country. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday. It is February the 11th, and Tiffany Huertas is here this morning. I'm so that's, happy to be here. That's awesome. I don't think we've seen each other in like a year or something. Yeah. Yeah, but I still work here. You still work here, so. I, I'm, I'm happy to see you in, in real life, <laughs> not on TV. Um, but if you're like me waking up, um, you rushed to your car this morning because you, I wasn't sure what to expect this morning, but I knew that change is here. Yeah, change is definitely here. And the next question other than coats is when do we need those umbrellas? Uh, right now. Now, uh, yeah, okay. a lot of folks are getting rain, uh, some mixed precipitation and some thunderstorms out there as well. So yeah, and just, you said we might see some. Yeah, there's some down to the uh, southwest right now. So here's what it looks like uh, outside with live cam over there at 10 at 410. Fairly tranquil. Now we do have a winter weather advisory. It is uh, in effect up until a couple of different uh, uh, times for depending on where you are for uh, portions of Edwards, Kerr, uh, Gillespie County. This is in effect up until midnight and then for uh, Kendall, Blanco as well as Hayes County. It's in effect up until three o'clock. So a little bit of icing is possible. Here's what it looks like on radar right now. And yeah, that is pink out there in the hill country. First of all, here in town, we do have some light showers that have been moving on through. So just allow yourself a little extra time this morning and then out there in the hill country we are picking up and even with some of the uh, freezing rain, a couple of lightning strikes are being detected out there in parts of the hill country and a little bit of mix is being reported at Kerrville and earlier this morning right around two o'clock there was a little bit of mixed precipitation that was being reported around uh, Castroville even though temperatures are much much warmer in uh, Castroville and then down to the southwest we do have another fairly good cluster of some thunderstorms which is working its way up to the uh, northeast temperatures right now again 43 Castroville, so even though a little bit of mixed was falling, nothing's going to amount to anything, but there could be a little bit of freezing on some icy surfaces. Of course, temperatures were very warm earlier this week, so the ground is still relatively warm, but overpasses, um, railings, tree limb signs, things like that. Maybe a little bit of uh, ice building up there. And this is starting in Bernie and then going up into the hill country where temperatures are uh, below freezing or at freezing, I should say, right now. And we got a fairly decent breeze out there as well. So we do have wind chill temperatures, 23 in Kerrville, 29 here in town, and it feels like 27 at Randolph. Definitely bundle up. Ash is on the high side, mountain cedar moderate, low amounts of everything else. Else. And basically, yesterday temperatures hardly moved. We stayed right around low 50s. Today, temperatures are hardly going to move, but it's going to be about 10 degrees colder. We're at 38 uh, right now and 40. That's it. Showers, even a storm, some mixed precipitation up to the north, gusty winds. We still have the chance for a little bit of mixed precipitation, even the next couple of mornings, and then it's going to get colder and then a better chance to see some uh, wintry stuff starting off next week. All those details in just a couple of minutes. If you are hitting the roads this morning, your traffic authority, Samuel King, what's going on, sir? Well, Mike, we'll start out in the Hill Country, as you mentioned, and this is a sort of a tool that tells you kind of what the weather conditions are, and we're seeing some ice uh, there uh, on the roads around uh, Kerrville and uh, up here in Comfort and everything. So that's uh, something that we'll have to uh, uh, keep in mind here. Uh, back here in, in town, uh, we had a bit of a delay here on I-10 at North Colorado, uh, but that seems to be improving, so that's something to uh, watch out for. Bandera Road th this morning uh, looking good. 11 minutes each direction, so a little bit of a delay at this hour. We'll continue to uh, watch that. And again, there's some construction this morning, 410 uh, area near State Highway 151. Uh, so that's something to uh, watch out for this morning. That should be wrapping up here in the next half hour or so. And here, uh, Mike mentioned uh, Bernie stage where it is freezing right now, but traffic at the moment is moving well. But be careful out there, folks, uh, as we go through the morning. Over to you guys. With temperatures dropping, Haven for Hope here in San Antonio says their door will stay open for those experiencing homelessness. The shelter preparing for more intake in the coming days. 
Haven Hope says they'll offer cold weather sleeping accommodations and warm jackets. Haven will be taking in new clients from 7 a.m. to 3 in the afternoon, Monday through Friday. Families with children are always welcome anytime, day or night. Sleeping bags, hand warmers, hygiene products, and snacks will also be offered after hours and provided on the weekends. Well, this morning we are learning more about when the coronavirus first began spreading around the world. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the details. Tonight, new findings showing the importance of masks that fit your face correctly and double masking to protect against the coronavirus. The CDC conducting experiments to assess two different ways of making masks fit better. The first one included wearing a medical procedure mask and placing a cloth mask on top. The second one included a medical procedure mask and knotting the masks around the ears and placing the extra material close to the face. They found both scenarios decreased transmission by over 95%. The bottom line is this, masks work and they work best when they have a good fit and are worn correctly. There's heightened attention on how to prevent the spread with evidence of COVID variants raging nationwide. Two more cases of the South African variant just reported in California. We have vaccines that work well against it, and obviously we're going to be planning, if necessary, to upgrade vaccines in the future if we ever have to do that. These mutation increases could require annual vaccinations for several years. I think we're going to try to configure a vaccine that has much more durable and widespread protection, uh, but that may take a few years. According to the White House, the national vaccine supply has gone up by 30 percent since President Biden took office. The country vaccinating roughly a million and a half people daily. This 102 year old Wisconsin veteran born during the Spanish flu receiving his second COVID shot. How do I feel? I'm OK. I, I'm feeling rather proud of Dad that he got his second vaccine, and I can't wait to start getting my vaccine so that we can start getting out in the world. But many states still facing challenges from Texas to Illinois. Now hundreds of military personnel deploying to L.A. this week to help get vaccinations into arms. But COVID deaths still soaring in California, the state close to passing New York with the most deaths from the virus. Latino families accounting for about half of those deaths. In San Diego, the Rodriguez family losing their mom and dad on the same day. He couldn't live without her, so he just let go. Zoreen Shah, ABC News, Los Angeles. Here's where we stand with coronavirus cases here at home. The seven day average is now 884 COVID cases every 24 hours. It's a drop since Monday. Three new deaths were reported while our positivity rate is below 10%. There continues to be improvement in our hospital system. 855 COVID-19 patients are being treated. 342 are in the intensive care unit and 198 are on ventilators. Appointments for the COVID vaccine continue to fill up. The city of Bernie says 500 doses of Moderna's vaccine are all spoken for at their vaccine effort. Meanwhile, appointments have begun at the two WellMed sites on San Antonio South and West Side. WellMed opened up its phone lines to fill 6,000 slots this week. And Walmart's pharmacy over on Days of Allah is preparing to administer COVID-19 vaccines tomorrow. For those who are in tiers 1A and B, they are eligible for the vaccine. The vaccine. Those who are eligible can schedule an appointment online we have a link for those appointments at ksat.com. And today, the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo is starting up, and there are upgrades in place at the Freeman Coliseum. The pandemic precautions include air purification, lighting in the Coliseum's air conditioning units, more hand sanitizer, and a grab-and-go technique for concession stands. The executive director for the Coliseum has outlined the new measures in a letter to county commissioners. We have that letter right now also on ksat.com. We're just getting started here on GMSA, 439, 38 degrees. So ahead, a first look at why Jeep is pulling its popular Super Bowl ad featuring the boss, Bruce Springsteen. And next, an update on the number of arrests made at the U.S.-Mexico border in the first few weeks of the Biden presidency. And if you're just waking up, it's going to be chilly today. Chile. Chile. <laughs> and you might want to eat a chili. <laughs> we'll be back. Welcome back. 442. President Joe Biden felt, held his first call with Chinese President Xi Jinping since taking office. The two leaders spoke late last night, touching on a range of issues, including economic and military matters. 
President Biden mentioned potential areas of cooperation, including climate change and nuclear proliferation. At the same time, Biden called out China on its unfair trade and human rights abuses. President Xi Jinping also said that any confrontation with the U.S. would be, quote unquote, a disaster. The call comes amid escalating tensions between the countries. Earlier, the Biden administration announced it's reviewing the U.S.'s position on China. One thing that will remain so far are the current tariffs. Arrests on the U.S.-Mexico border are not showing any signs of slowing down in the first weeks of the Biden presidency. Border Patrol says more than 75,000 migrants were detained in January. That's 4,000 more than the month before. And sources say the trend is continuing in February as well. Border arrests have been taking up for months. Officials blame that on an increase in crime and instability in some countries. However, Border Patrol says the January number may be overstated because some migrants may have been arrested more than once. Raw video footage of last month's deadly insurrection at the Capitol, now a key exhibit in the impeachment trial of former President Donald Trump. Lawmakers prosecuting the case aim to prove that the former president bears singular responsibility for the siege. Much of the footage had not been seen before by the public. It included detailed security video of the break-in, distraught members of Congress receiving comfort, and rioters in hand-to-hand -hand combat with police. Today brings the second and final full day of House arguments with the Trump legal team taking the lectern tomorrow and Saturday for up to 16 hours to lay out their defense. Right now it is 444, 38 degrees. Yes, in the 30s. Up next, Jeep is canceling its popular Super Bowl ad featuring Bruce Springsteen. We'll tell you why. Welcome back. Jeep is pulling its new ad featuring Bruce Springsteen after it was revealed the rock legend was charged with DWI. ABC's Will Reeve has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, new details on the arrest of legendary singer Bruce Springsteen for driving while intoxicated three months ago. According to the National Park Service, the rock and roll and New Jersey icon was booked on three counts, including DWI, reckless driving, and consuming alcohol in a closed area in his home state's Gateway National Recreation Area in Sandy Hook, a place where he shot album covers and even music videos like Brilliant Disguise. Filmed inside an abandoned house in the park. A spokesperson with the park telling ABC News that during his arrest, Springsteen was cooperative throughout the process. Never. This all comes on the heels of Springsteen's incredibly popular Super Bowl ad for Jeep. We'll tell you how that company is responding coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Will Reeve, ABC News, New York. 447, when do you say we check traffic? Yeah, how are the roads looking, Samuel? Oh, things are looking okay uh, at the moment. Uh, we just learned that the construction out here in 410 has been cleared uh, for the night, so that's one less thing to worry about. But if you're up here uh, in the hill country, uh, watch out for uh, this. We have some, looks like some icy conditions on some uh, of the roads, and that's extending all the way down now uh, to Bernie. So that's something to uh, watch out for. And let's take a look at I-10 from Bernie into downtown San Antonio. Uh, 25 minutes at the moment, 27 minutes uh, northbound. So that's still looking good at the moment, but again, we'll keep an eye on it. And once you're inside 1604, uh, 13 minutes uh, heading into town, 12 minutes uh, heading uh, northwest uh, toward Bernie, uh, toward 1604, excuse me. So that's something to watch out for. This is 37 and fair. Some raindrops uh, on the lens there. So also, even if you're not having any ice to worry about like they do up in the hill country. There is some rain in the area, so uh, take some time and plan some extra time if you're heading out this morning. Over to you guys. Mike, uh, as I was driving into work this morning, I was thinking, I, I, I hope Mike doesn't say this is it as far as temperatures go today, that they're not really going to change at all. Sorry, they're not going to change at all. So. That's what yeah. I feared. Uh, and in some, you know, some places it is right around freezing, and that's not really going to be changing all that much. Mm -hmm. uh, plus, we've got the wind chill to deal with. We've got all this moisture in the atmosphere, so it adds to the damp cold out there. And uh, a fairly tranquil picture over there at 10 at 410, looking back toward downtown. But don't let that fool you, because there is a lot of rain around the area right now. Uh, some light, even a couple of uh, moderate showers that are moving through town right there around Elmendorf, a little bit uh, more of a moderate shower. 
and then you go up into the hill country and yes we are detecting a lot of uh, mixed precipitation and this is falling it's, it's fairly warm you go upstairs in the atmosphere a couple of thousand feet and temperatures are probably about 20 25 degrees warmer so a lot of this is falling as rain and then freezing on contact or right before it reaches the ground. So uh, that's why there may be a little bit of icing as Sam was talking about on some of the uh, elevated roadways, overpasses, things like that. Even a couple of lightning strikes in there being detected out in northwest portions of the hill country and a nice cluster of thunderstorms down to the southwest. Uh, just about moving in toward uh, Carrizo Springs. Catula, you may be getting some of these in the next uh, little bit as well. And this will continue to move on through here. So yeah, almost a little bit of everything and computer models. Very very, very fine line and that's always what we have to deal with you know it's not either warm or cold it's like right down that fine line and that's going to be the situation throughout uh, today and here's this one computer model and it even has now this doesn't mean uh, anything would be sticking but it does have a little bit of mixed precipitation even in northern portions northern fringes of uh, Bear County and up into Kamal County and this would be even by later on this afternoon so maybe a little bit of that kind of chunky rain if you will uh, and this is going to continue through uh, most of the day we will have rain around here then it's going to start to taper off a little bit there is a chance for for a slight bit of uh, some freezing precipitation tomorrow, some wintry stuff, and then on Saturday morning, and then it looks like later on in the day on Saturday, we get sort of a secondary wave, and as the next wave of really cold air starts to work its way in here, and that's going to be Saturday into Sunday. Then we jump ahead Sunday night, and things will start to pick up again, and then into Monday morning, and Monday looks like it's going to be a messy day with a lot of sleet, freezing rain, as well as uh, some light snow falling throughout much of the day on Monday and that's going to come to an end. Finally, it looks like by about uh, mid to late afternoon on Monday. So at least it is a holiday for a lot of folks on Monday with President's Day, but uh, it's just going to stay cold and we do have those chances for some mixed precipitation, a little bit of sleet, a little bit of uh, some freezing rain or even snow over the next few days. So today showers around the area, maybe a couple of thunderstorms that mix up to the north and then throughout the rest of the afternoon. Again, temperatures really aren't going to be moving. So what you have right now is pretty much what you're going to be getting all day long. Showers, a couple of thunderstorms and still some of that mixed precipitation up to the north. Uh, 40 for a uh, well, an afternoon temperature. I don't even want to call that a high. And then we do have the uh, winter weather advisory until and I've got two different times up here. So for uh, Kendall, Blanco and Hayes County, it goes into effect up until or it's in effect up until three o'clock this afternoon. And then for Kerr and Gillespie over toward Edwards County. It's in effect up until midnight tomorrow morning. So up until uh, right around tomorrow morning, I wouldn't be surprised if more advisories get posted over the next uh, couple of days. We'll have a little bit of wintry mix tomorrow morning as well as I think Saturday blustery some rain wintry mix on uh, perhaps Sunday and then that's all going to be turning over into some uh, sleet, freezing rain and snow on Monday and then we get the really cold stuff and there it's not going to be uh, out of the question to get down into the teens by Tuesday morning. Well, Monday looks all sorts of fun, Mike. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, Again, it's, a good, it's a good thing this is happening over on a weekend, and even, a though, holiday. Even, even though we've got today and, and tomorrow to right. deal with in the Hill Country, but especially for Monday that it is a, a holiday for mm -hmm. a lot of folks. All right, more to come on that right now. 453, 38 degrees. There's more to come. The Go-Go's are celebrating a major milestone. Plus, Sonic the Hedgehog is getting another movie. This year's Rock and Roll Hall of Fame nominations are out. CNN's David Daniel talks to one of the nominees in today's Hollywood Minute. The Go-Go's are celebrating their first ever nomination for induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It was a big day for bassist and guitarist Kathy Valentine. It's really exciting and we're in such amazing company. I mean, I can't say what a morning it's been. My phone is exploding. My Twitter's exploding. It's awesome. And uh, I just hope that, you know, we get the votes because it would be a big old fizzle to get nominated and then not so anyway, I'm trying not to, I'm trying to just stay in the moment. 16 artists are nominated this year. Inductees will be announced in May.
Paramount's title announcement for Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is appropriately speedy. The 10-second clip includes two tails on the two, an apparent reference to Sonic's two-tailed best friend, Miles Tails Prower. Look for both April 8, 2022. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. We were looking forward to all these big releases that got bumped to this year, 2021, and now they're moving everything, almost everything, to next year. Oh, man, so. but at least there's something to look forward to. Right? Got to yeah. see the positive. In I know. I, I'm looking for the positive. You can help me this morning. 457, 38 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, a look at what's next in Donald Trump's second impeachment trial as the former president's lawyers get set to launch their defense. I will tell you how Alexa can now greet visitors at your door, even when you're not home. That's coming up in Tech Bytes. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Coming up, opening arguments in the impeachment trial of former President Donald Trump showcases never before seen video of the attack on the Capitol. I'm Andrew Dimbert in Washington, D.C. with the latest. Winter is back, and in a big way, what do you see radar? Mike has details of what's going to be still a very interesting next four or five days around here. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, the 11th of February. Thanks for being with us, and you were prepared this morning. You had your coat and everything. I did. I, I actually dusted off the old trench coat, Mike Ostrich. I'm surprised you didn't wear yours, Inspector Gadget. Oh, uh, no, heavy top coat, and yeah, you need definitely a heavy coat today because not only is it cold, but it's that also that damp chill, and then we haven't even seen the coldest temperatures yet. That is still to come. It is uh, very interesting, though, out there. Uh, we're at 38 degrees right now. We got a good breeze at uh, northerly wind, about 14 miles per hour. And so that's really adding a wind chill to it. And notice how temperatures just aren't moving throughout the day. Sorry, it's hidden by that sign, but uh, we're going to be staying right around upper 30s, 40. That'll be about it. No change in the aquifer on yesterday's reading and uh, ash really showed up a lot of it yesterday. A little bit of uh, mountain cedar, modern amount of mountain cedar. Here's what it looks like on radar. And yeah, we got all sorts of colors on there right now. We've had some uh, and still have a few light to moderate showers moving through town off and on. And this is going to be the situation throughout the day, even a couple of uh, a couple of decent areas, uh, some decent downpours can be expected throughout the course of the day. Then we've got a lot of uh, kind of some mixed precipitation, maybe even a little bit of uh, snow is trying to show up right there around Kerrville. Some of this is freezing rain. Now the ground is still warm from a couple of days ago, but the elevated surfaces, you know, um, overpasses, bridges, things like that, uh, street signs, those would be the ones that would get the coldest first. And some of this could be uh, freezing on contact out there in portions of the hill country. And yeah, that's a little bit of lightning being detected. So it's a very unstable atmosphere up a couple of thousand feet. And that's also the situation back down here to the uh, southwest around Carrizo Springs. We've got some pretty good thunderstorms that are working their way off to the northeast. So we'll have showers some thunderstorms as well as some freezing precipitation. There is a winter weather advisory in effect and kind of depends on where you are, but it's for the hill country and it's uh, Kendall, Blanco, Hayes County up until three o'clock this afternoon and then Kerr, as well as Gillespie and uh, Edwards County up until midnight. So we'll still have that chance for some freezing precipitation. Like I said, it is windy out there, so we do have wind chill temperatures. Uh, you can knock off anywhere from about 10, maybe 15 degrees. So it feels like the low to mid 20s and even right around 30. And not much is going to be changing. Again, wet and cold, freezing rain up to the north today. And tomorrow it's going to be uh, about the same as far as temperatures, maybe a little bit of mixed precipitation in the morning, slightly better chance on Saturday and then on Sunday, and it will continue to get colder as the weekend rolls on. And then next week, wintry on Monday and extremely cold temperatures. We may be looking at uh, an extended period of freezing temperatures going into starting Sunday, going into the first part of next week. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King. All right, messy out there. Any problems? No uh, big uh, problems at the moment. This is I-10 at uh, Bernie stage where it is a little bit cooler. You see the camera moving around a little bit, but at the moment traffic seems to be moving well. Of course, we'll keep an eye on it. Mike was mentioning the situation up here uh, in the hill country. This is sort of a look at the conditions out there. What's falling from the sky it looks like there's ice uh, even all the way down here to Bernie. That's probably pretty light, but you can see some delays 
roads like a 46 and some delays here south of Kerrville. So just be careful if you have to travel in this area or if you know people who are traveling uh, in this area, especially once you get past Bernie on I-10. Uh, taking a look at 151, had some construction overnight, but things looking fine here, eight to nine minutes between 1604 and 90. And here's a look at the travel times, 25 minutes at the moment from I-10 from Bernie, that's still fairly normal time. Uh, 19 minutes on 90 into downtown San Antonio from Castroville and the north and east, 26 minutes uh, from New Braunfels on 35. We'll keep an eye on that as well and half an hour in to downtown San Antonio from Seguin on I-10. Mark, Tiffany, over to you. Thank you, Samuel. Haven for Hope expecting up the upcoming days to be some of their busiest of the year. The shelter preparing for a larger intake as temperatures continue to drop. Stephen Cavazos is live north of downtown this morning. And Stephen, how will the shelter handle potentially large number of people in the middle of a pandemic? Well, good morning, Mark Tiffany. Now, safety has always been a top priority for Haven for Hope, and with the cooler temperatures approaching, they say their door will always remain open. And despite being a pandemic, they say their campus is COVID safe. Now, the shelter is preparing for a larger intake of people in the coming days, but it's something they say they've been preparing for. Now, Haven for Hope will allow people to stay as long as they need to. They say their partners, like the San Antonio Food Bank, has prepared extra meals, and they plan to offer cold weather clothing, including warm jackets. Now, Vice President of Haven for Hope Molly Baglieri tells us a specific indoor space has been dedicated for sleeping and social distancing guidelines will still be enforced. Our um, extended cold weather sleeping, all of the mats are at a minimum six feet apart, if not eight feet apart in most instances, and we sleep people toe to toe. Now, sleeping bags, hand warmers, hygiene products, and snacks will also be offered after hours and provided over the weekends. Now, Haven for Hope will be taking in new clients Monday through Thursday, Monday through Friday, that is, from 7 in the morning to 3 in the afternoon. Of course, families with children are welcome anytime, day or evening. Reporting live just north of downtown, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Stephen. Just about 5.07 after opening arguments in the impeachment trial of former President Donald Trump, some GOP senators are calling the case against him compelling. This after the Democratic prosecution presented new footage from the deadly January 6th insurrection at the Capitol. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has what to expect in the coming days. Using never-before-seen video from the Capitol riot. House impeachment managers using all eight hours of opening arguments to meticulously lay out their case. On January 6th, President Trump left everyone in this Capitol for dead. The Democratic prosecution claiming Donald Trump incited the mob that attacked Congress on January 6th, using his own words to argue he stoked the flames. That mob was paying attention and they also followed instructions New, chilling security footage shows just how close the rioters got to lawmakers. The tense moments playing out as senators relive the deadly day, watching in stunned silence. The insurrectionists were on the hunt for House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Nancy! Where are you, Nancy? And then Vice President Mike Pence, leaving the chamber down a staircase to safety as the violent mob made its way in, talking about assassinating the VP. Another clip shows Utah Senator Mitt Romney being warned by an officer to find safety before darting down a hallway. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and others making a run for it too. You were just 58 steps away from where the mob was amassing and where police were rushing to stop them. The powerful presentation seeming to sway some Republicans. The evidence that has been presented thus far is pretty damning with Senator John Thune from South Dakota calling the opening arguments compelling. I think they've done a good job connecting the dots. Many though saying they're not ready to make a final decision yet and are still waiting to hear from Trump's defense. And the trial continues today with Democrats wrapping up their opening arguments. Then Trump's defense team will get its turn. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Washington. Back to local news this week, San Antonio Questions, or SAQ, concerns another construction project, this one on the city's northwest side. Your traffic authority, Samuel King, joins us now, and work has finally started on a specific road, right? Yeah, this is a uh, Prue Road out there, northwest side. People have been asking about it, and we're specifically talking about the stretch between Babcock Road 
and a Laureate Drive or Network Boulevard. Uh, Gray asked us, when will construction begin on the section of Prue Road between Network and Babcock Roads? What is the estimated time to complete that work? Well, construction started last month, a bit behind schedule previously provided for the people in the area. The city tells us that AT&T is working on some underground utility upgrades right now. Those will take several months to complete. The utility work requires crews to do some digging in the roadway, as you see there. So there will be some alternating lane and uh, road closures. Uh, the project not only aims to widen the roadway, but upgrade traffic signals, add a shared use pedestrian and bike path, as well as drainage improvements. Now the work is being conducted in phases and is set to be completed in the summer of 2023, so another couple of years. Uh, this is another project that's part of the 2017 bond issue, and including the utilities work, the budget is about $31 million. And San Antonio Public Works tells us you can contact them if you have any questions about this. They want to hear from you. And if you have any more traffic or transportation related questions about San Antonio or the region, you can head over to ksat.com slash traffic to leave your question there. You can find me on Facebook, Samuel King News. And on Facebook, you can even leave us a video of your question and we'll maybe play it and answer it on air. Mark, Tiffany. Fair enough. Thank you, Samuel. 510, 38 degrees. So ahead, your ring doorbell is getting an upgrade thanks to Amazon's Alexa. We'll tell you more about this new feature. And next on GMSA, we explore the origins of Black History Month. And bundle up this morning. 38 degrees and Monday will be colder. How cold? We'll tell you. Black History Month is an annual celebration of achievements by African Americans. It's also a time for recognizing their central role in U.S. history. Sarah Costa explains the origins behind Black History Month. African American History Month actually grew from an event called Negro History Week, which was a brainchild of noted historian Carter G. Woodson and other prominent African Americans. The story of Black History Month started in 1915, half a century after the 13th Amendment abolished slavery in the U.S., according to History.com. The historical website says Harvard historian Carver G. Woodson and prominent minister Jesse E. Moreland funded the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History, an organization dedicated to researching and promoting achievements by black Americans and other people of African descent. History.com says the group started Negro History Week in 1926, choosing the second week of February to coincide with the birthdays of Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass. The week prompted schools and communities across the country to start history clubs and host performances and lectures. With the arrival of the civil rights movement in the late 1960s and a growing awareness of black identity, Negro History Week evolved into Black History Month on many college campuses. President Gerald Ford officially recognized Black History Month in 1976. Since then, every American president has designated February as Black History Month with a specific theme. This year's theme is Black Family Representation, Identity and Diversity, exploring the African diaspora and the spread of black families across the U.S. Back to you. Time now, 516, 38 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, an upgrade for Apple Maps users. We'll tell you about new features that will inform you about conditions on the road. You're clearly someone who takes care of yourself. So why wait to screen for colon cancer? Because when caught in early stages, it's more treatable. I'm Colaguard. I'm non-invasive and detect altered DNA in your stool to find 92% of colon cancers, even in early stages. Tell me more. It's for people 45 plus at average risk for colon cancer, not high risk. False positive and negative results may occur. Ask your prescriber or an online prescriber if Colaguard is right for you. I'll do it. Good plan. Need better sleep? Try Nature's Bounty Sleep 3, a unique tri-layer supplement that calms you, helps you fall asleep faster, and stay asleep longer. Great sleep comes naturally with Sleep 3, only from Nature's Bounty. Honey. Honey. New NyQuil Severe Honey is maximum strength cold and flu medicine with soothing, honey-licious taste. NyQuil Honey, the nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, aching, stuffy head fever, best sleep with a cold medicine. 
In today's Tech Bytes, smart doorbells becoming more intelligent. Ring Doorbell Pro users can now have Alexa greet their visitors. Amazon's virtual assistant will also offer to take a message or tell a delivery person where they can leave a package. Next, upgrades to Apple Maps. Users will soon be able to report speed checks, accidents, or any other hazard similar to Waze. Hands-free updates can be done with Siri's help. The new features will roll out this spring. And finally, grown-ups are buying all the Happy Meals. That's because McDonald's has a Pokemon-themed Happy Meal. They come with trading cards, which are in high demand. Boxes of the cards are selling for $1,000 online. Some locations are now limiting how many Happy Meals you can buy at once. But what about the fries? They're delicious, too. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. Oh, Mr. Moten has a point. I used mm. to have a Pokemon book with yeah? Pokemon cards. Now ask me where that is. Where is it? No idea. Okay, all right. But I'm going to go look for it now. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Some dollar signs there. <laughs> 520, let's check traffic. Samuel, what's the latest? Well, good morning, Mark and Tiffany. Uh, just wanted to highlight up here in the uh, Hill Country, still have uh, some of the issues, and it's uh, also in some other areas, 281 uh, coming in coming down from uh, Blanco, and you still have this uh, issue in the Kerrville area, so that's something to watch out for. Here in town, a few delays at 410 at 90, so it'll take you seven minutes on 410 to get from Ray Ellison to 151. And here's a look at Transkai traffic flowing well across the area, but I did like how the sky looks uh, in this picture this morning. That's strange orange hue there. So uh, something to uh, enjoy, but take it, be easy, take it careful, something like that, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I know we're seeing stuff on Samuel's maps and on radar, Mike Osterhage, but are, are we dealing with an icing event just yet in parts of the Hill Country? Yeah, I mean, there have there has been uh, some freezing rain that's been detected in parts of the Hill Country, and the reason uh, for that is the fact that, yeah, it is really cold here, but if you go upstairs a couple of thousand feet in the atmosphere, temperatures really shoot up, and so that's why most of this is falling is rain and then freezes once it gets into some of these colder temperatures. So here's what it looks like on radar right now and we've got almost a little bit of everything had some rain moving through town and it seems to have uh, stopped at least for the moment moving off uh, up over 10 and up by 35 more rain coming in from divine and kind of sliding up the uh, 35 and then here's some of the freezing rain in parts of the hill country western kerr county up around uh, fredericksburg and even a little bit there in and around blanco also some lightning strikes yeah there may be a little bit of thunder up there in parts of the hill country and then also down around Carrizo Springs and there's actually uh, kind of a, a note that the Weather Service put out about significant weather down here just to the fact that those are some pretty good thunderstorms and those are going to continue. So we've got a, a really strange atmosphere set up. It's cold enough for wintry mix and then unstable enough for some of those thunderstorms around here. So it is freezing going up around burning stage and then into the hill country and just to put it in perspective, the ground is very warm, so it's just from the surface up a, a few feet, and so that's why anything on uh, overpasses, signs, uh, tree branches, things like that may be freezing on contact. Now, as far as high temperatures yesterday, of course, just like the day before, we had quite a difference. I mean, what is that? 25, 30 degrees difference from uh, northeast to southwest. This was in the wee hours of the morning. We only stayed in the uh, upper 40s, about 50 throughout the day. Big difference today and temperatures in the hill country are going to be staying right around freezing or so and even though we will stay about to say 40 or mid to upper 30s we could still see this computer model does have a little bit of uh, maybe some mix even northern portions of Bear County which is entirely possible but of course if it hit the ground it wouldn't stick now things will start to kind of taper off there may be a little bit of uh, some mix early tomorrow morning and then once again on Saturday then more of that's going to be picking up Saturday night and into Sunday we'll have some uh, showers and even a little bit of changeover into some freezing rain and then it looks like Monday is going to be the day when we really see a lot of sleet freezing rain and then also some changing over into some snow during the day on Monday 39 degrees today at noon showers some of that mixed precipitation up to the uh, north and perhaps even as close by as uh, like I said northern Bear County can't completely rule that out 40 
for an afternoon temperature. So we're going to be staying below what the normal low temperature is throughout the day. And of course, the winter weather advisory portions of the hill country and then north up uh, 281. This is up until three o'clock, including Kendall County and then up until uh, midnight for parts of the uh, hill country as far as the winter weather advisory. And then tomorrow, maybe a little bit of uh, mixed in the morning. Same thing on Saturday and temperatures stay about the same. We'll be down close to freezing in the mornings. And then Sunday we get the next surge of cold air coming in here. Very cold Monday into Tuesday. Sunday's going to be blustery and cold. It's going to stay breezy pretty much every day as well, but really blustery uh, Sunday, Monday, and maybe some of the coldest temperatures Tuesday morning that we've seen around here in four years. Wow, it's definitely a forecast worth keeping a close eye on. What's on your tie this morning? I see the hearts. It is. It is Bugs and, and bugs. Taz. Tasmanian Devil and um, here you coming over with the. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it looks and, good. And some hearts on. I there. don't remember that one, but it's a lot of fun. There it is. Yeah, great shot. Thank you guys. Look, Mike showing off. Little, little, I little love the details. Uh huh. It's yeah. awesome. Right now it is 525, 38 degrees. Up next, the man behind the Hustler magazine Empire has passed away after battling health problems for more than 40 years. Proud pornographer and fierce free speech champion Larry Flint has died. The man behind the Hustler magazine Empire had battled health problems for over 40 years after he was shot and left partially paralyzed by a white supremacist upset by an interracial photo shoot in Hustler. Flint long said he was most proud of his fight for free speech, which earned him a landmark Supreme Court win in 1988. Larry Flint was 78. Whoever you are, wherever you're from, it's what connects us. Bruce Springsteen's tenure as car commercial pitchman was short. Jeep has pulled the Super Bowl ad. It ran Sunday. Springsteen's first time ever doing a commercial after word Wednesday that he had been arrested for driving while intoxicated back in November in his home state of New Jersey. The ad has disappeared from Jeep's YouTube page. I can't see him coming down my eyes, so I gotta make the song cry. Jay-Z and Foo Fighters, among those nominated for the first time to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Groundbreaking band The Go-Go's and rocker Todd Rundgren, also first-timers. 16 nominees in all, including Devo, Dionne Warwick, and now six-time nominee LL Cool J. The 2021 class will be announced in May. And one of everybody's favorite friends with a birthday today, Jennifer Aniston is 52, while Grammy-winning singer Kelly Rowland is 40. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. A lot of exciting news in Hollywood. Tons. Tons of birthdays. That's right. Happy birthday. <laughs> 529, 38 degrees. Still ahead on CMSA, bundle up. Meteorologists tracking a winter storm expected to stretch 1,600 miles across the country. We'll take a look at areas that have already seen the icy blast and where it's headed. Plus, Hooters is offering a unique Shred Your Ex promotion for Valentine's Day. How you can participate, coming up. And a good morning to you. It is Thursday, February 11th. So I have a new hashtag for Monday. What is it? Messy Monday. Messy Monday. Yeah, that could be the least of our problems. Uh, Mike's here with more on a seven day forecast that bears watching. Yeah, it's going to be just really, really cold. I mean, it's very cold out there. And think about it. We were in the uh, the 70s and some areas in the upper 80s just a couple of days ago. And now things are definitely getting colder out there by the airport. Uh, looks like the road is damp. We've had some showers move on through here. And boy, it's just that bone chilling cold out there. 38 degrees. A a lot of humidity. Dew points are uh, almost up to the actual air temperature and northerly wind at 14. So it uh, not only does it, it feel much colder because of the wind, but also this damp air just kind of sucks the, the heat away from your body, draws it away and kind of sneaks down the back of your neck. So we've had a few showers and uh, there's a fair amount of rain around the area right now. And some move through town now right around Seguin, New Braunfels. This is all sliding up to the northeast at a fairly decent clip, but we can expect uh, even throughout the afternoon in some areas a few decent downpours today. Then out in the hill country, it looks like things uh, may be kind of, well, obviously still in western Kerr County and up there around Fredericksburg, Rock Springs, a little bit of freezing precipitation and even a couple of uh, lightning strikes in there. So we've got 
cold atmosphere, but an unstable atmosphere, especially upstairs. And so that's why there is some lightning being detected. And then also some pretty good thunderstorms off here to the southwest around uh, just north of Carrizo Springs. This is all sliding up to the north to northeast. So showers, a couple of thunderstorms, and then even some freezing precipitation. There is a winter weather advisory in effect for parts of the hill country, depending on where you live. And for uh, Kendall, Blanco, and Hayes County up until 3 o'clock and then further into the hill country, Kerr, Gillespie and Edwards counties up until midnight. And there is a little bit of light icing possible on elevated surfaces. The ground is still fairly warm just because we had those temperatures up in the 70s and even 80s a couple of days ago. Uh, as far as wind chills right now, though, 23 Kerrville, 30 in town, 26 in New Braunfels. Yeah, definitely bundle up throughout the day. Ash is high. Mountain Cedar is on the moderate side. Temperatures like yesterday aren't going anywhere, but it'll be about 10 degrees colder, at least here in town and close to freezing in parts of the hill country and also fairly windy. We'll still have a little bit of that mix up to the uh, northwest and even the next couple of mornings can't rule out a, a little bit of some uh, some wintry stuff out there. Then it gets even colder and a better chance, like uh, Tiffany was saying, a messy Monday. Details on that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King. Nothing really going on yet, right? Yeah, we have uh, things. This is downtown I-10 at the Y. Traffic uh, flowing uh, fairly well. We do have an incident at uh, 410 at Harry Wurzbach. We'll get you more on that in just a few minutes. Mike was mentioning the winter weather to our north and west, and you can see uh, from Bernie over to Comfort to Kerrville. If you're on I-10, watch out for that, 87 to 81. Uh, and, and here in south of uh, Kerrville as well. So that's something to watch out for this morning. The travel times, though, are still looking fairly well. Not as many people on the roads at this hour. So half hour coming in on I-10 from Seguin, 24 minutes on I-10 from Bernie. We'll have another check of traffic coming up. Mark Tiffany, over to you. Thank you, Samuel. Haven for Hope plans to keep their doors open for people seeking warmth from the cold weather. The shelter expects to see a larger intake over the coming days. Stephen Cavasso is live north of downtown this morning with preparations that are underway. Good morning, Stephen. Hey, good morning, Mark and, and Tiffany. Well, you know, the shelter has usually one of the busiest times for Haven for Hope. And as the temperature continues to drop over the coming days, they say this could be crucial for those that are seeking shelter from that cold weather. Now, they have been preparing for the major drop in temperature and will allow people to stay as long as they need to. Now, they say partners like the San Antonio Food Bank has prepared extra meals and they plan to offer cold weather clothing, including warm jackets. Now, the campus will be COVID-19 safe. A specific indoor space has been dedicated for sleeping with social distancing still in force. Now, mats will be placed six feet apart and people will be sleeping toe to toe. Vice President Molly McGlary tells us despite these unusual circumstances, Haven for Hope's mission to help has not changed. We want to be able to offer, even under these incredible circumstances with COVID, we want to be able to offer every service, and that's Haven services and our partner services. Haven for Hope will be taking in new clients from 7 in the morning to 3 in the afternoon, Monday through Friday. Of course, families with children are always welcome any time of the day and evening. Now, Buglary says that usually they distribute about 400 jackets to those who really need it during these colder weathers, but they still encourage those in the community to donate when and if they can. Mark Tiffany. Thank you, Stephen. 537 this morning, winter weather alert and ice storm warning stretching across more than a thousand miles of the United States. And as CNN's Britt Conway reports, don't expect the cold to go away anytime soon. Looks like Punxsutawney Phil might have been right. It seems winter isn't going anywhere anytime soon, and definitely not this week. Tens of millions of people stretching 1,200 miles from Texas to New Jersey are under some kind of winter weather alert. And look at this in purple ice. Multiple states are under an ice storm warning. The biggest concern is the amount of ice that is forecast here. Parts of Arkansas, south central Arkansas, parts of central and southern areas of uh, Kentucky there. That's where we could see the highest amounts exceeding a quarter of an inch to maybe three quarters of an inch. Along with West Tennessee, southeast Missouri and the southern tip of Illinois. But Kentucky seems to be taking the brunt of it so far. 
That's the area of interest that we're watching very carefully here. And of course, any of those suburban communities, there are the wooded areas. We know trees can easily come down with that amount of ice. It could also be dangerous to drive. There could be widespread power outages and there might be airport delays and cancellations. The Kentucky National Weather Service worries this could be, quote, one of the worst weeks for winter weather in eastern Kentucky in over a decade. And some vaccination sites in the state have shut down for now. By the weekend, every state in the lower 48 could see below average temperatures. Well, the only area that may still be on the warmer side of normal, South Florida. Enjoy. I'm Britt Conway reporting. Ride sharing company Uber lost over almost $7 billion in 2020. Like most businesses, the company's rideshare department has been deeply affected by the ongoing pandemic. Uber has shifted its focus to other ventures, including beefing up its delivery delivery portfolio in recent months. In July, the company acquired one of its smaller food delivery competitors, Postmates, for $2.6 billion in an all-stock deal. And just last week, the company announced it's buying alcohol delivery startup Drizzly. A new study indicates that a once-a-week injected diabetes drug can aid weight loss. Researchers say it helps overweight and obese people lose an average of 15% of their body weight over 16 months. The drug makers asked the U.S. Food and Drug Administration to approve simaglutide for chronic weight management. If approved, it would be just the fifth prescription weight loss drug on the U.S. market. Right now it's 540, 38 degrees. Delice. Still ahead, Hooters is offering a unique way to celebrate Valentine's Day by shredding a photo of your ex. We'll explain. Welcome back in your morning consumer headlines. Target is offering its employees cash and a free ride to get a COVID-19 vaccine. The retail chain says its 350,000 hourly workers will receive four hours of pay, two hours for each dose and $15 to use for a lift ride when they roll up their sleeves for the shots. Target is also joining forces with CVS to offer vaccines in their stores and distribution centers. The CDC says more than 42 million vaccine doses have been distributed so far. Tech tycoon and SpaceX CEO Elon Musk getting closer to a breakthrough in yet another industry. The man who privatized space travel and made electric cars sleek is now beaming internet service down from orbit. SpaceX's Starlink internet service now accepting pre-orders online. Starlink provides an internet connection using an array of satellites. The company says initial beta service now available both domestically and internationally. USA Today reports the hardware for the setup costs about $500 and the service itself goes for $99 a month. Hooters is inviting you to shred your ex. Again, this Valentine's Day, you simply destroy a photo of your ex and get 10 free boneless wings when you buy any 10 wings. Participating U.S. locations will have shredders on hand, but you can also do it online. You upload the photo and then virtually shred, burn, bury or throw darts at it. <laughs> <laughs> Once you're done, you get a digital coupon. The promotion is only good for dining in on Sunday not to go. Hooters says it wants to break last year's record of destroying 49,000 photos. 49,000 people took advantage <laughs> of that last year? <laughs> <laughs> well, more people are at home right now, so maybe they will have more photos. And what was the option? Photos. See, so, so shred, burn, bury, or throw darts at it virtually. Oh, man. That's cool. <laughs> what if you could do all of them? Uh, right now, 544, 38 degrees on your Thursday morning. Up next, as we observe Black History Month, we are taking a look at historically black colleges and universities and their critical role in our nation. 547, in honor of Black History Month, we are learning about historically black colleges and universities, also known as HBCUs. HBCUs played a critical role in establishing educational needs for black Americans. Sarah Costa has more. Prior to the Civil War, there was not a structured higher education system for black students. Public policy and certain provisions prohibited the education of blacks in various parts of the nation, which is why historically black colleges and universities were so important. The Institute for Colored Youth, the first higher education institution for blacks, was founded in Cheney, Pennsylvania in 1837, making it the first historically black college and university. It was followed by two other black institutions, Lincoln University in Pennsylvania in 1854 and Wilberforce University in Ohio in 1856. 
According to the U.S. Department of Education, although these were called universities or institutions from their founding, a major part of their mission in the early years was to provide elementary and secondary schooling for students who had not had previous education. It was not until the early 1900s that HBCUs began to offer courses and programs at the post-secondary level. HBCUs have played an historical role in enhancing equal educational opportunity for all students. By 1953, more than 32,000 students were enrolled in well-known HBCUs like Fisk University, Hampton Institute, Howard University, and Morehouse College. Today, there are 107 HBCUs in the U.S. There are nine HBCUs in Texas, and St. Philip's College is the only HBCU in San Antonio. Back to you guys. It's about 10 till 6. All eyes on the roads yes. and the weather today. Samuel, how is it looking out there? Well, we uh, have uh, one incident. Uh, well, first, let me, I, I was going to get to that in a moment. But first, our cold weather reminders this week, uh, because we are having a cold. Yesterday, we talked about your, your batteries. Today, car seats. Uh, AAA Texas reminding folks, keep your car seats inside. Keep them warm and warm up the car first, because the third part is the key part here. No puffy jackets for your kids. The issue is they create a gap in the case of a crash, so it separates you from the harness. So put your put a fleece maybe uh, on your child or a sweater and then wrap the, the blanket around the car seat or put on the coat backwards, but again, don't put it over uh, the harness there. So just a reminder as we're, we're cold uh, over the next few days, something to keep in mind. Now, here is a situation uh, 410 eastbound at uh, Harry Wurzbach Road. Uh, see there, the right lane is closed. There's a stalled vehicle. Uh, again, the good thing at this hour, traffic is uh, relatively relatively uh, light, so traffic is still flowing, but that's something to watch out for. And uh, we mentioned up in the hill country still have the situation w uh, with the roads. You see some uh, purple, pink, whatever color you like to think of. As close as Bernie, uh, the bigger issue, of course, is up toward Kerrville, so that's something to watch out for today, guys. And Mike has more on that. Yeah, we've had some extra precipitation being reported even uh, earlier this morning. Uh, checked about 2 o'clock around Castroville. There had been a little bit of uh, mixed precipitation reported. Uh, nothing is really showing up, not that much as of right now, but we're definitely not done with it. We had some rain move through town earlier, a couple of uh, light little showers, but obviously more is coming in here and uh, still in western Kerr County, even a couple of thunderstorms. So we've got a really unstable atmosphere, despite the fact that it is so cold out there. And of course, over toward Rock Springs, we still have that uh, frozen precipitation or perhaps even freezing on contact on elevated surfaces because temperatures are pretty cold out there. And then uh, we got some pretty good thunderstorms down there to the southwest, and so we will continue to see this move up to the northeast. Showers, a couple of thunderstorms, a few decent downpours mixed in as well. Um, it's just going to be basically high winds. I don't think we have to deal with anything uh, severe from those storms. Now, temperatures. Again, we were talking about it, and Sam had just mentioned that, how even as far south as uh, Bernie with some of that freezing with the freezing temperatures, so anything that does fall may freeze on contact. The ground is still warm from the past couple of days, but obviously the air temperatures are colder, and that goes out in toward the hill country. And in some areas, say Austin, uh, even New Braunfels, 30, you know, mid-30s, outlying could be close to freezing. So that's a very, very fine line around here. And that's pretty much what uh, this computer model does depict. It even has uh, the chance for a little bit of freezing precipitation uh, as far north as northern Bear County. So it is that that little fine line that we're walking around here as far as temperatures are concerned. Tomorrow morning may have a little more uh, freezing precipitation in parts of the, the hill country and then on Saturday as well we'll have a couple of showers around here. It'll start to kind of taper off and then pick back up later on Saturday and then that's going to be the situation overnight and then into Sunday we get a secondary colder shot of air moving on in here. Rain will develop overnight and then especially on Monday we'll have some uh, freezing rain as well as some snow then throughout the afternoon and temperatures are going to be staying very, very cold. The gee whiz for this morning, 26 below Cutbank, 29 below International Falls. Wind chill temperatures are still 
48 degrees below zero in Cutbank. It feels like one right now, Oklahoma City, 13 in Dallas. And that's what we have to deal with now, our wind chill temperatures, because it is going to stay fairly breezy today. So 39 degrees, temperatures basically don't move throughout the day. Showers, a couple of thunderstorms around, and a little bit of mixed precipitation is possible still up to the north. 40, but it's going to feel much colder than that with winds about 10, 20 miles per hour and gusting. The winter weather advisory for the hill country up until midnight and then going up uh, 281 and 35. That includes Kendall, Blanco, and Hayes counties just up until 3 o'clock this afternoon. Again, I wouldn't be surprised if more advisories are posted over the next couple of days. It stays cold over the weekend and then much, much colder Sunday and into the first part of next week. We'll be back. Coming up here on a Thursday morning on GMA, we'll start with the fallout after day two of former President Trump's historic second impeachment trial, the never before seen videos of the Capitol insurrection and the question, will Republicans agree that the president was responsible? Our political team will join us with the latest. You'll see that and so much more coming up right here on GMA. We at KSAT want to remind you about our community partner, University Health, hosting a blood drive this month. It's happening February 18th and 19th from 10 to 3 at the Whitty Museum on Broadway. If you'd like to participate, you'll need to make an appointment. You can do so by calling 358-2812. We have all this information on KSATcommunity.com. Well, at this point, the pandemic, many of us may be suffering what some call Zoom fatigue. Still ahead on GMSA. How you can stay on your A game when you're working online and avoid boredom while sitting in front of your screen at home. Transguide, we are keeping a very close eye on the situation with temperatures dropping and moisture moving into the area. Updates coming up from Samuel and Mike. With temperatures dropping, Haven for Hope says their door will still be open. Coming up, the preparations that are underway. The evidence that has been presented thus far is pretty damning. I just, I don't see how uh, Donald Trump could be reelected to the presidency again. That was Republican Senator Lisa Murkowski of Alaska, Alaska after House impeachment managers laid out their case against former President Trump. We'll hear more about the second impeachment trial and what we can expect as it continues. And don't forget your sweaters this morning. It's chilly outside. We'll have your full forecast coming up. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. It is Thursday. It is February 11th, and it's awesome having Tiffany Huertas here this morning. Kind of a rare appearance early in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> that was like... <laughs> She's been dazzling us with her optimism <laughs> all morning long. It's and really exciting to Are be you here. pretending to be awake or are you awake? No, I'm awake. Okay. I had my coffee. I have my sweater. Well, if you weren't ready. awake, just walking outside yeah. was kind of like... Right? Yeah, <laughs> I ran to my car. Yeah, I did definitely wake you up and it's going to stay cold and it's going to be getting colder in the next couple of days. Plus, we've got all the, the moisture out there. We've got a lot of rain, got some thunderstorms and we've had some freezing precipitation so far this morning. And as you can see over there, uh, 410 by the airport looks a little bit on the uh, the damp side. Temperature right now is at 37. So we've actually uh, dropped down a couple of degrees. 33 is the dew point, so a lot of humidity because that those two numbers are very close to each other and we've got a decent breeze around here. So we are dealing with the wind chill this morning. Here's what it looks like on radar. We've got rain. We've got moderate to heavy rain, thunderstorms and also some of that uh, freezing rain. So here in town, just got a few showers moving on through, but here comes the leading edge of that batch of showers and thunderstorms down there to the uh, southwest out in the hill country. We are still picking up some uh, freezing rain out there in western Kerr County, uh, Gillespie County and over toward Rock Springs, even a a couple of uh, lightning strikes are being detected, so don't be surprised if you hear a little thunder with that. The ground is still warm, but it's the elevated surfaces where this may be freezing on contact with those temperatures right around or just below freezing out there in the hill country. And then again, we've got some pretty good thunderstorms just right around Catula, La Prior. Some decent downpours, at least are moving along fairly quickly, but don't be surprised if you uh, see some of those. And we've got uh, winter weather advisories for the Hill Country, Gillespie, Kerr, Edwards County until midnight, and then Blanco, 
Kendall and Hayes County up until 3 o'clock this afternoon. I would venture a guess that there are going to be more of these advisories posted over the next couple of days and then especially as we get into the first part of the week. Wind chill temperatures, 20s and low 30s. Yes, grab a sweater, as Tiffany said, and then put a big jacket on top of it. Ash is a heavy mountain cedar moderate, light everything else. Temperatures, kind of like yesterday, aren't really going anywhere throughout the day, although yesterday we averaged right around 50. Today, it's going to be upper 30s to 40 throughout the day and also gusty winds, so it is definitely going to feel much colder than that with more rain around here. We do have more opportunities for some wintry mix going in through well, not only tomorrow, but the weekend, and then again, the colder air comes in here late in the weekend and the first of next week. More on that coming up. Traffic Authority, Samuel King. Boy, I mean, given the fact we've got that on the map, there hasn't been much going on yet. No, things uh, look fairly well. It seems like people are uh, uh, being careful out there on the roads, Mike. And good morning to you. Good morning to everyone. As Mike was talking about, you had the winter weather reports uh, may not be falling at the moment, but sort of the damage has been done uh, on the roads there. So especially if you're heading I-10 north of uh, Bernie out toward Kerrville, that's something to watch out for. Here in San Antonio, we have this situation still 410 at Harry Wurzbach Road. The right lane closed on 410 eastbound. Uh, the crews are still out there. Traffic flowing well again uh, this time of morning. Uh, things are, are looking good, but we'll continue to keep an eye on that. The 25 minutes coming in from Bernie and I-10 into downtown San Antonio, so that's still a good time uh, for now. We'll continue watching that. 19 minutes on 90 from Castroville. 26 minutes coming in on 281 from Belverde. 26 minutes coming in on 35 into downtown San Antonio from New Braunfels. Mark, Tiffany, over to you. Police in three different cities working together to solve one shooting. The victim is a woman who drove herself to a hospital in Live Oak. But police say she was shot somewhere else, possibly in one of two nearby cities. Katrina Weber is live outside Northeast Methodist Hospital on Topper, Topper Wine Road. Why is there such confusion, Katrina? Well, the bottom line is there are three cities that kind of converge in this general area. The woman told police she's not from around here, so she's not familiar with any of the cities. But she says that she was pumping gas when someone with a gun took aim at her. The Live Oak police took the lead on this case after she showed up at the hospital emergency room in their city around 3.30 this morning. The woman was suffering from a gunshot wound in her leg, and she's being treated now. Police say she told him she was at a Circle K station when someone suddenly shot her. Well, they determined that she called 911 from the intersection of Topperwine and Kitty Hawk, which is right near the line between two other cities, Converse and Universal City. So investigators are not really sure where this happened. That woman told them that she made her way to the hospital, though, with help from a stranger. Now, what else police don't know is whether or not the shooter happened to be in a car. They say that the victim was able to offer only limited information before she went in for treatment at the hospital here. Reporting live in Live Oak, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. As temperatures continue to drop, Haven for Hope in San Antonio says their mission will not stop. The shelter expected to take a larger intake of people seeking warmth from the cold over the coming days. Stephen Cavazos live north of downtown this morning with more on the services that will be provided. And it looks like you're trying to stay warm too, Stephen. You know, Mark, definitely a struggle out here this morning, but you know, safety has always been a top priority for Haven for Hope, and they say their mission and doors will always stay open for those that are seeking shelter and warmth in the coming days. Now, the shelter, of course, has been preparing for a larger intake of people in the coming days. A specific indoor space has been dedicated for sleeping with social distancing still in force. Now, the shelter says they have been preparing for the major drop in temperatures and will allow people to stay as long as they need to. Now, they say partners like the San Antonio Food Bank has prepared extra meals and they plan to offer cold weather clothing, including warm jackets. Now, Vice President Molly Bugleri says help will always be there for those who need it. People shouldn't be embarrassed to do that. These are services that are compassionately given with incredible respect and dignity because everyone at Haven and our partners know that we could all be in that position. Sleeping bags, hand warmers, hygiene products and snacks, of course, will also be provided during after hours and also provided over the weekends. Now, Haven for Hope will be taking in new clients Monday through Friday for, from 7 in the morning to 3 in the afternoon. And as we've mentioned, people with families are welcome 24-7. Mark Tiffany, over to you.
Thank you, Stephen. San Antonio police need your help finding two people involved in a robbery at a pizza shop. Police say these two men on your screen walked into a Little Caesars on Blanco and Bassey back on February 1st. They say one of the suspects threatened an employee with a knife and robbed that person. The suspects then ran away. If you recognize these men, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. House impeachment managers will continue their arguments against former President Donald Trump in his impeachment trial today. Lawmakers prosecuting the case say the former president is responsible for inciting a mob of supporters to attack the U.S. Capitol building. They argue the president began priming his supporters months before the election and encouraged them to storm the Capitol building in a speech on January 6th. Representative Joaquin Castro, who represents San Antonio in Congress, said the former president also refused to send help. Senators. You've seen all the evidence so far, and this is clear. On January 6th, President Trump left everyone in this Capitol for dead. The House impeachment managers will continue their arguments today. Former President Trump's defense team will present its arguments tomorrow on Saturday. We'll have more on the impeachment trial coming up in our next half hour. To the pandemic, local health officials report 660 new cases of COVID-19 in Bear County. They report three more deaths from the virus as well. Mayor Ron Nuremberg says seven-day moving average is now 884 cases per day. 855 patients are in the hospital with the virus, and 113 were admitted in the past 24 hours. Freeman Coliseum will have several new COVID-19 prevention measures in place when the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo starts today. The upgrades include a grab-and-go concession stand or concession stands to cut down on lines. Also be boosted internet service in the building so people can use touchless transactions when paying for parking, tickets, or concessions. The air conditioning of the building will have air purification lighting, which organizers say can kill the coronavirus. If you plan to attend, you can also expect temperature checks at the door. You also need to wear a mask and keep six feet of space between you and others. We have another San Antonio question for you this morning. This week's SAQ concerns another construction project, this one on the city's northwest side. Your traffic authority, Samuel King, joins us now, and work has finally started on Pru Road. Yes, uh, this is a project that's been long awaited for neighbors uh, in that area, and we're talking about the stretch specifically between Babcock and uh, Network Boulevard and Laureate Drive. Garrett Gray James asked us when will construction begin on that section of road between Network and Babcock, and what is the estimated time to complete? Well, uh, construction did start last month, a bit behind the schedule previously provided for the neighbors in the area. The city tells us that AT&T is working on some underground utility of grades. Those will take several months to complete. Utility work requires crews to do some digging in the roadway, so there will be some alternating lane and road closures. The project not only aims to widen the roadway, but upgrade traffic signals, add a shared use pedestrian path, as well as drainage improvements. The work is being conducted in phases and is set to be completed in summer of 2023, so another couple of years. Now, this is another project that's part of the 2017 bond issue that voters approved a few years ago. It does include a utilities work, so the budget does run about $31 million for this project. You can contact San Antonio Public Works if you have any questions. We'll have that info for you on KSAT.com later this morning. And if you have any traffic or transportation related questions, head to KSAT.com slash traffic or find me on Facebook, Samuel King News. You can even leave a video of your question and we'll play it and answer it on air maybe. We'll see. Mark Tiffany, back to you. Thank you, Samuel. 6 11, 38 degrees. More people are buying McDonald's Happy Meals, but not for the burgers and not by kids. See who is buying all the meals later on GMSA. February is Black History Month. After the break, we'll see the origins of the annual celebration. And we've been telling you all morning, it's cold out there. 38. Mark is ready. Oh, I'm ready. I'm, I'm bottled up. I'm just a little worried about what could happen on Sunday or Monday, and Mike will have the details. African American History Month actually grew from an event called Negro History Week, which was a brainchild of noted historian Carter G. Woodson and other prominent African Americans. 
The story of Black History Month started in 1915, half a century after the 13th Amendment abolished slavery in the U.S., according to History.com. The historical website says Harvard historian Carver G. Woodson and prominent minister Jesse E. Moreland funded the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History, an organization dedicated to researching and promoting achievements by black Americans and other people of African descent. History.com says the group started Negro History Week in 1926, choosing the second week of February to coincide with the birthdays of Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass. The week prompted schools and communities across the country to start history clubs and host performances and lectures. With the arrival of the civil rights movement in the late 1960s and a growing awareness of black identity, Negro History Week evolved into Black History Month on many college campuses. President Gerald Ford officially recognized Black History Month in 1976. Since then, every American president has designated February as Black History Month with a specific theme. This year's theme is Black Family Representation, Identity and Diversity, exploring the African diaspora and the spread of black families across the U.S. Back to you. Right now, 617. As we mentioned, be careful out there if you're just hitting the roads very slick out there. Yeah, especially in parts uh, of the area. And we still have this situation here. Uh, this is 410 at Harry Wurzbach Road uh, here heading eastbound on, on the north side. That right lane is blocked because of a stalled vehicle earlier, but that has continued a little longer than we thought it would. So uh, watch out if you're uh, heading in that area north side on 410. Uh, here's a look at the area. Not many delays, but we do have a crash here. Uh, this is going to be on a just west of I-10. This is a Colorado at Perez Street. This is I-10. Uh, so a few delays here, but uh, not really affecting traffic on the interstate too much. Uh, we've been watching I-10 just because of the situation uh, with the weather this morning. Uh, 25 minutes from Bernie to downtown, so that's pretty good. 24 minutes if you're heading uh, northbound uh, this morning. So just keep a, an eye on, on things. Uh, some of the precipitation has moved out for now, but uh, expect it to be continuing this morning. Of course, Michael, will have more on that just in just a bit here, huh? Mm -hmm. Yep, 37 degrees at last check, and if you're expecting a warm-up in the next couple of days, look elsewhere. <laughs> no, uh, we're really not going to be seeing anything leaning toward the warmer side until probably uh, middle of next week at least, and that's just in the afternoons. The mornings are still going to be very cold, so yeah, warm up your car, warm up the bus. Temperatures are going to be staying right around the, uh, say, mid-upper 30s or right around freezing out in portions of the hill country. A decent breeze out there. We've got some showers some thunderstorms, uh, some mixed precipitation, some freezing rain up to the north, and that's going to be the case all day long. And temperatures, once again, pretty much aren't going to be going anywhere, and it will stay breezy. So the combination of the wind and also that uh, the moisture in the air really, really makes it feel cold. Nice, uh, nice shot of downtown, and visibility is still pretty good. So uh, we don't actually obviously see anything falling in this picture as of right now, but there are some uh, showers out there. We're looking at temperatures to be uh, potentially down into the teens by uh, Tuesday morning. The last time we were in the teens, I was looking at uh, some of the records. What I found was uh, about four years ago, back on January 8th in 2017, it was uh, 16 degrees. The day before that on the 7th, it was 19. So it's been a while. We've been close to it, but not uh, at least out there at the airport, officially down into the teens in four years. So we've got uh, some showers. We had some move through. Now here's the leading edge of the next wave of showers and thunderstorms that, as you can see, a lot more of these have been developed around Dilly, almost toward Pearsall, in, in around Fowlerville, and more of these uh, clusters are popping up, and then also back around uh, La Prior. Those are almost heading up to the north a little bit, and these are heading up to the northeast. So we will see, and even some uh, decent downpours today, so we can't rule that out. So it's going to be very cold, very wet today, that bone-chilling kind of a day. And all morning long, we have been seeing some of this freezing rain in portions of the hill country. Got to emphasize, the ground is still very warm, because of what we had uh, last weekend and the first part of this week. Now it's the elevated surfaces that are sitting up in this air that's just right around freezing or just below that. As you can see, temperatures are right around 32, 31 Kerrville Lost Maples. So that's why some of that rain may be freezing on contact and perhaps on some of the elevated roadways too. some of the overpasses could be freezing on contact. Uh, we've got upper 20s further out in the uh, hill country now. 
throughout the rest of today. There's still going to be the chance for once this extra rain moves on in here, the latest rain moves on in and gets up into the hill country with those colder temperatures. It could be freezing on contact and there is a chance even northern uh, Bear County around Kamau County. Some of that could be uh, freezing as well and then it's going to start to taper off by later on this evening. Tomorrow there may be a little bit to start off with as far as some rain or freezing rain and same thing on Saturday morning and then later on in the day Saturday we'll start to see more of that rain developing some of the freezing rain. Then we jump into Sunday. Sunday is going to be very cold. We get that next surge of colder air coming on in here and it's going to be blustery. We'll start to see rain developing overnight and that's going to turn into freezing rain as well as some snow on Monday and that's going to be the case throughout the day, at least the, uh, the first portion of the day on Monday. Then we should start to uh, clear out just a little bit in behind that. And once we get rid of some of that rain and then clear out, that's when things get really, really cold by Tuesday morning of next week. So today, 39 degrees at noon. Again, best way to put it is basically steady temperatures all day long. It's going to be damp. It's going to be windy out there. Wind chills we will have showers some thunderstorms as well as uh, some of that mixed precipitation northern half of the uh, the area, basically uh, some freezing rain. And then later on this afternoon, more of the same steady temperatures. Winter weather advisory, it does include Kendall County, uh, Blanco and Hayes up until three o'clock and then Kerr, uh, Gillespie and Edwards counties up until midnight. Again, I think there's probably going to be more of those advisories posted over the course of the next couple of days because we still have the chances for some uh, some mixed precipitation. Temperatures by Saturday morning are going to be closer to freezing here in town. Sunday, 35, that's going to be it after starting off freezing. And then once we get into Sunday, probably late afternoon, there's a chance we may stay below freezing for at least about 24 hours or longer than that going into Tuesday morning. We're still looking at freezing temperatures. It looks like starting off even into, as you can see, Wednesday and Thursday of next week, despite the fact that afternoon temperatures will be approaching 50 by midweek. Put covers on my faucets yesterday just to be safe, knowing real, what was coming. Real good idea, especially since we are going to have those extended mm -hmm. freezes coming up here by Sunday, Monday. Yeah, and people have already started covering some uh, plants and to start to think about the pets, too. Exactly. Good idea. All right, thank you, Mike. 623 right now, 37 degrees. You're watching GMSA. And there's more to come. Zoom meetings have taken over, but they can get exhausting. Later on GMSA, we will take a look at Zoom fatigue and how to prevent it. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. This past year has brought us close. The right gift brings us closer. Get an extra 20% off something special for the one you love. Plus, Star Money bonus days are going on now at Macy's. Lactate is 100% real milk, just without the lactose, so you can enjoy it even if you're sensitive. Yet some people say lactate isn't real milk. I guess all those cows must actually be big dogs. Sit. I said sit. I'm made to move, but these days, I'm not getting out as much as I'd like to. That's why I take OsteoBiflex. It helps with occasional joint stiffness, while it nourishes and strengthens my joints for the long term. OsteoBiflex, because I'm made to move. Liz, you nerd, cough if you're in here. I took me some XTM for my phlegmy cough. What about Rob's dry cough? Works on that too, and lasts 12 hours. 12 hours? Who studies that long? Musin XDM relieves wet and dry coughs. The number one brand doctors trust. Smart doorbells will soon have new features. Ring Doorbell Pro users can now have Alexa greet their visitors. Amazon's virtual assistant will also offer to take a message or tell a delivery person where they can leave a package. There is an upgrade coming to Apple Maps. Users will soon be able to report speed checks, accidents, or any other hazards similar to the app Waze. Hands-free updates can be done with Siri's help. The new features will roll out this spring. Well, it turns out grown-ups are buying all the Happy Meals lately. That's because McDonald's has a Pokemon-themed Happy Meal. They come with trading cards, which are in high demand. Boxes of the cards are selling for $1,000 online. Some locations now limiting how many Happy Meals you can buy at once. So you've been warned. Nothing Tiffany surprises Wirtis. me anymore. I know, right? <laughs> Do you ever order a Happy Meal and feel a little guilty because there's no kid in the backseat? 
No. I don't either. <laughs> right now, 627, 37 degrees. The impeachment trial of former President Donald Trump continues today. We will hear what impeachment manager said yesterday and find out what we can expect to hear today. A shooting victim ends up on the doorstep of a live oak hospital, but police here tell us they're not so sure it happened here. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have that story. As temperatures drop, Haven for Hope says their mission won't stop. More on their preparations coming up. And speaking of winter's chill, protecting pets, plants, and pipes should be at the top of your to-do list starting this morning. Mike's forecast does not get any warmer. And good morning to you. It's Thursday, February 11th. Thanks for joining us. Um, I think it's just so important right now, especially all those things you talked about. Uh, the weather's not going to be any better later on. Yeah, Mike, it kind of goes slowly downhill for the next uh, two, three, four days, doesn't it? Yeah, we'll stay almost steady with temperatures uh, today, tomorrow, Saturday, and then Sunday gets much colder, much colder the first part of next week. And, uh, you know, we're talking about the, the preparations because what we're looking at is not only some really cold temperatures, but extended period of below freezing readings starting probably late Sunday. We'll hit freezing at times, but late Sunday through Monday and maybe even into Tuesday morning. Justin Horn and I were just talking about that. About about things to the, the prep about because he was trying to find some uh, covers for his plants online and said most everything was kind of sold out. So and even if you have to cover up your, your hose bibs, you don't have one of those little uh, styrofoam thingies, you can wrap it in some towels or something too, and that would help to, to keep temperatures up. OK, here's what's going on on radar right now. We've got uh, some light showers that have started to move into town. Once again, it is a very cold rain to say the least, and that will uh, continue off and on throughout the day. And then some of that actually is well, first of all, out in the hill country, as you can see it is a little bit of freezing rain that's being picked up and even some lightning strikes in there. So cold air, but a very unstable atmosphere on top of that. And this is uh, Kerr County. You can see Gillespie and then also over toward Edwards County and then further down to the uh, southwest. Got a big area of uh, moderate to heavy rain and even some thunderstorms. These are now moving into southwestern Atascosa County, almost up toward Pearsall and a lot more developing back down to the southwest. So we will continue to see showers, even a couple of thunderstorms throughout the rest of the afternoon as well as some of that freezing rain. And that's why winter weather advisories are in effect and depends on where you live. Kendall, Blanco, Hayes counties until three o'clock this afternoon and then Gillespie, Kerr and Edwards counties up until midnight. Again, my guess is that they're going to see a lot more of these advisories posted as we go on into the weekend and perhaps even uh, looking at what's going to happen on Monday, maybe even a winter storm watch. But again, that's a speculation on my part. We'll keep tabs on it, obviously, over the next few days over the weekend. Going out into the hill country, we're at 37 right now in town, but then you've got the freezing readings out in the hill country, which is why any rain out there would be freezing on contact. Allergens, ash, mountain cedar, high and moderate, respectively, low amounts of mold and elm. Wet, cold, freezing rain northwest today, and also blustery. And then over the weekend, a little bit colder, some mixed precipitation in the mornings. Then Sunday we'll start to see rain really developing Sunday night into Monday, and that's going to be some freezing rain and snow and then extremely cold temperatures. Like I said, not only extremely cold, but also that extended freezing period. More on the weekend forecast coming up. Traffic Authority, Samuel King and so far, so good. I mean, we're yeah. kind of yeah, lucky. Considering you're tempting fate there, Mike. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. good way to put it. As uh, traffic uh, continues to build, but as Mike mentioned, this is a 410 at Austin Highway. Uh, traffic uh, building, but flowing well. The situation at 410 in Harry Warsbach has uh, been cleared. Uh, Mike was mentioning some of uh, the weather. Uh, the road conditions seem to have improved for the moment out here uh, in the hill country, but still watch out for that if you're traveling up there throughout the day. And to the east, we have some wet roads here, especially around Seguin. So looking at some of the travel times coming in from Seguin on I-10 into downtown San Antonio, half an hour, 26 minutes in on 35 into San Antonio, 20 minutes on 90 from Castroville, 25 minutes from Bernie, and then from the south, 17, 29 minutes, fairly normal times this morning. We'll keep an eye on it. Over to you guys. A stop for gas has turned into a painful experience for one woman. She says someone shot her as she filled up her gas tank early this morning. She shut up at Northeast Methodist Hospital out in Live Oak. Katrina Weber is there with a the live report. Katrina, you mentioned earlier police are not even sure where this happened. 
That's right, there's a lot of confusion here. And now police from three different cities are investigating this case, or at least looking at it. Now, after the woman showed up at the hospital here around 3.30 this morning, police roped off her car as a crime scene. Still, they say that was not the actual scene of the crime. The victim, who was not from this area, was not able to offer any street names, but she says she was pumping gas at a Circle K station when someone shot her in the leg. The Live Oak police say she placed the 911 call from the area of Topperwine and Kitty Hawk, which is actually near two other cities, Converse and Universal City. The woman says she was able to flag down another driver who then escorted her to the hospital. Now, investigators have to nail down exactly where the shooting happened to know which police department should take over the case. But it seems that they will have to wait to talk to the victim because she is actually undergoing treatment right now here at the hospital. Reporting live in Live Oak, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Haven for Hope will be providing warmth for those seeking to avoid the cold weather. The shelter expects to see a larger intake of clients as temperatures drop over the coming days. Stephen Cavazos is live north of downtown this morning with more on why Haven officials say it's a crucial time for those in need. Good morning, Stephen. Oh, good morning, Tiffany. Definitely a crucial time, but Haven for Hope says uh, they've been preparing for this. And when the weather usually gets this cold, they say it is even a busier time. However, they say their door will not close and these services they have can be life saving. Now, the shelter will allow people to stay as long as they need to. They say partners like the San Antonio Food Bank has prepared extra meals and they plan to offer cold weather clothing, including warm jackets. The shelter is preparing for a larger intake of people in the coming days, and a specific space has been dedicated for sleeping with social distancing still in force. Vice President Molly Begleri tells us that despite these unusual circumstances, Haven for Hope's mission to help has not changed. We want to be able to offer, even under these incredible circumstances with COVID, we want to be able to offer every service, and that's Haven Services and our partner services. Haven for Hope will be taking in new clients from 7 in the morning to 3 in the afternoon, Monday through Friday. Of course, families with children are always welcome anytime, day or night. Now, the Glary also says that they usually donate around 400 jackets to those who really need it. However, she says the shelter is always looking for more donations. She encourages the community to donate what they can. Reporting live just north of downtown, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. In their first full day of arguments in the case against former President Trump, House impeachment managers showed senators terrifying new video of the deadly insurrection at the Capitol on January 6th. That included pointing out just how close the rioters came to the senators themselves. CNN's Karen Kaifa has the details. House Democrats laying out a timeline and drawing a line between months of former President Trump's rhetoric about the 2020 election and the deadly riot at the Capitol on January 6th, using never before seen video that showed just how close the rioters came to Trump's own vice president. On January 6th, President Trump left everyone in this Capitol for dead. A direct personal appeal from the House impeachment managers to their jury, senators, most of whom experienced the January 6th insurrection firsthand. The evidence will show you that ex-President Trump was no innocent bystander. The Democratic prosecutors alleging former President Donald Trump's incitement began well before his January 6th speech to rally goers with repeated calls to stop the steal. His false claims about election fraud, that was the drumbeat being used to inspire, instigate. And leaning on disturbing Capitol security video and other law enforcement footage and audio for a dramatic timeline of the insurrection. You can hear an officer when he realizes that the insurrectionists had overtaken the police line. Critical of Trump's actions that day and his inaction. He did not once condemn the attackers. In fact, on January 6th, the only person he condemned was his own vice president, Mike Pence. Video presented by the House Democrats showing just how close rioters came to the former vice president and to the senators themselves. They were just a feet away from one of the doors to this chamber. 
And the House impeachment managers have one more day on the Senate floor to make their arguments. They'll turn things over to the Trump defense team tomorrow. Now, a number of Republican senators said they were shaken by the videos they saw in yesterday's presentation, but signaled it was unlikely to change their vote. In Washington, I'm Karen Kaifa. In your morning consumer news, Chairman of the Federal Reserve Jerome Powell is now saying the U.S. needs a war effort to help millions of people who've lost their jobs during the pandemic to find new work. Speaking to the Economic Club of New York, he calls for the same society-wide commitment that rose after World War II to find jobs for our returning soldiers. And speaking of jobs, Best Buy is now warning workers that some are being cut and other employees at its stores will see reduced hours. The Wall Street Journal says sales for the most recent quarter were up 23 percent, but those were driven by a surge in online orders. There are seven Best Buy stores around San Antonio. The Trump administration's demand that U.S. operations of the short video service TikTok be sold are now being shelved. The Wall Street Journal says the Biden administration is hitting the pause button as it reviews the claims that TikTok's Chinese owners pose a national security threat to the U.S. Higher gasoline prices are helped to push consumer prices higher overall in January, but the Labor Department says slumping airline fares helped blunt the impact. The consumer price index was up 0.3% last month. As for gas prices, the average in San Antonio is 2.10 per gallon, the average in Texas is 2.18 per gallon, and the national average for a gallon of unleaded gasoline is 2.49. Right now 6.42, 37 degrees. At this point in the pandemic, many of us may be suffering from Zoom fatigue. After the break, how to stay on your A game when you're communicating and work around the boredom. How is everybody doing? Zoom has become a way of life for millions of working Americans. Every day. We teach, we teach our classes on Zoom. We use Zoom for like staff meetings. He does videos. But after months of sitting in front of a screen, many employees are getting tired and bored. It's a phenomenon dubbed Zoom fatigue. It really is bad for our mental health to constantly be plugged in. Experts say don't let up. First, resist the urge to stay in your pajamas all day. In one study, researchers found that dressing more formally for work led to higher levels of abstract big picture thinking. Also, if you can, schedule 10 minute breaks every hour. If you're sitting for long periods of time, try standing up every 30 minutes. To protect your eyes from strain, try the 20-20-20 rule, where every 20 minutes you take 20 seconds to look at something 20 feet away. And make sure you have a comfortable ergonomic chair. Also, improving how you look on Zoom may energize you. Experts say to line up your camera up to your eye level and invest in a ring Zoom light. If you look good, you'll feel better. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. If you watch KSAT from the Texas Hill Country, heads up this morning. There's traffic going to be possibly because the roads are kind of slick today, right? Yeah, they are uh, slick, but we do want to have some reminders because it is going to be cold the next few days. About car seats, yesterday we told you importance of making sure your car battery is up to snuff. Today, this is a reminder from AAA Texas about your car seats. Keep them inside if you can. That'll keep them warm. Warm up your car first. Uh, that's also important because of this next here. Uh, no puffy jackets on the kids in the car with the car seats because it creates too much of a barrier between a harness in the person. So put on maybe a fleece or a sweater on your child inside the car and then wrap them in a blanket again outside of the, the car seat and then put on the jacket backwards. So that'll uh, help them out. Uh, looking here across the area, still have this accident here in uh, Colorado and Perez, uh, but not really affecting traffic uh, on the interstates. Have a bit of a slowdown already here at Bandera in 1604 down to 10 miles per hour on Bandera heading uh, northbound. So taking a look between 1604 and 410, 11 minutes right now. That still looks good, uh, but uh, we'll keep an eye on that. And this is a 10 at Bernie Stage Road. Traffic uh, building up, Mike, and some wintry weather in parts of the area, too. Yeah, and we've got more rain moving into where the freezing temperatures are, so it looks like we could get another round of that out in portions of the Hill Country. A little bit of rain showing up on this camera lens. This is uh, down around Brook City Base looking up to the north in town, and we got a lot of rain in and around the metropolitan area right now. And then notice how we got some of those moderate showers moving in toward Hondo, even a couple of thunderstorms, and then a lot more in the way of thunderstorms back down 
down here to the uh, south and west and also some decent downpours. So you can see some fairly decent downpours and it's going to be a very cold rain. And then as this rain continues to move up in toward the hill country, notice how there are a few spots of maybe some freezing rain being detected. And that's because it's really, really warm upstairs in the atmosphere. Just go up a couple of thousand feet and temperatures go up into the uh, probably mid 50s. But as that rain falls and then hits the colder air down here at the surface, it freezes on contact. And that's why we're dealing with some of this, uh, maybe some freezing rain on the elevated surfaces and temperatures are right at freezing 34 in Balverde. So you got a really close call there and that's just one thermometer out there. So in your backyard, it may be right around freezing. And then we've got the dew point temperatures right at 32. So it's not as though we've got bone dry air that could with that rain. It's something we call evaporative cooling. Uh, there's not a lot of room for that to evaporate, but we could actually drop down close to freezing out there in Balverde, right around Canyon Lake, and that would be in the next uh, couple of hours. Then on top of all this, we've got a decent breeze. So we've got wind chills in the 20s and uh, low 30s. So it is definitely bone chilling. You got that damp air that sneaks down the back of your neck, and then you just got the wind to give us all those wind chills. So here's the computer model. It's got all the rain around here and then throughout the rest of the morning. Notice how it's got some of that maybe freezing rain up there around 281 around Balverde. That is a possibility as well as in portions of the hill country and then south of there. It's all in the liquid form. Now tomorrow morning there may be a little bit more precipitation out there. Still some freezing temperatures in the hill country Saturday morning as well. And then it looks like Saturday evening we'll see a bit more and freezing temperatures out there in the hill country. Sunday is going to be one of those days where it's going to be cold and blustery. Temperatures will actually be colder on Sunday. We get another shot of colder air. Then late Sunday evening into Monday is when more of the uh, moisture is going to move in here. And most all of that is going to be in the form is going to be wintry, freezing rain and some snow. And that'll be through probably about the first half of the day on Monday. Then we should start to clear out. But if we clear out a lot Monday night, which is what a lot of forecasts have, then it gets really cold Tuesday morning. Temperatures stay steady all day long, uh, upper 30s, 40 or close to freezing out in the hill country. Showers, storms, mixed precipitation up to the north and to the northwest. Winter weather advisories for the hill country um, up around 281, 35. It's up until uh, 3 o'clock. And then for the hill country, Kerr Gillespie and uh, Edwards counties up until midnight. More of those advisories I suspect are going to be issued over the next few days. We stay cold through the weekend. Still some of that mixed precipitation Sunday even colder and that's when the uh, snow and freezing rain move in here. We could have an extended period of below freezing temperatures late Sunday in through Monday and then really cold by Tuesday morning. So just get prepared for all of that because it's going to be a really cold weekend and a good chunk of next week too. Pets plants pipes. Yes, Pets, plants, pipes. It could be very dangerous if you don't plan ahead. So definitely yeah. plan ahead. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. 651, 37 degrees. Are you in a slump struggling to get things done? The secret may actually lie in what you're listening to. Tomorrow, GMSA tips on creating your own mental health playlists. And a look outside. We're still in the 30s. Traffic is picking up. Please be careful if you're heading outdoors. And remember to bring a sweater. We'll be right back. Welcome back, 655, uh, taking a look at traffic, traffic building here at 410 at Austin Highway, and you can see some uh, rain on the map if you're traveling in from the east, maybe some wet roads around Seguin. To the west, we have the issue with winter weather, especially all the way down toward uh, Bernie. But the travel time still looking good right now. 24 minutes coming in from Bernie, 27 minutes from New Braunfels, about a half an hour from Seguin, Mike. Okay, here's a good example of what is going on right now. Take a look in Bear County, Northwest Bear County, and how the rain is moving in here. It's hitting those freezing temperatures up there around Bernie Stage up by I-10, turning into a little bit of uh, freezing rain on contact, a lot more in the way of some thunderstorms, some moderate to heavy downpours, and then all of the, the colder air up there in the hill country. And as a matter of fact, it looks like we have a new, for Uvalde County, a uh, severe thunderstorm warning. I'm going to check on that. Uh, we do have the winter weather advisories for parts of the hill country today. Temperatures freezing in the hill country. We're not going to move all that much. We're down to 36 right now. More rain and some wintry stuff all day long. All right, updates throughout Good Morning America. We'll see you at 9.